Hey guys, welcome to the Financial Bunny TV. My name is Nicolette Mashile, also known as the Financial Bunny. I don't know, I'm starting to feel like this intro into these videos is starting to get a little bit boring. It's 2023, we need a new one. I mean, in daily today, you say, Dumelangrel Amarela Moraimo, SABC1, Nakalibito, Kenna Nicolette Waramashile, Harbeyakwa, Bushpa Krishma, Pulaning. I need something like that for my YouTube channel because I mean, it's getting a bit boring. But I digress. Today, I want to talk a little bit about an inquiry that I got literally this morning. I absolutely love it for you guys that you guys can email me at like six in the morning seven in the morning and i know and I, I know i don't have, i'm not forced to to respond but i know that you are asking me with an expectation to respond to your emails i love it for you guys kudos to you guys <laughs> but yes i got an inquiry this morning and i had a back to for back and forth conversation with this young lady and i was like you know what um we need to do this as a video and it's regarding um trying to buy a car and getting rejected by the bank so getting declined for a car loan now do remember none of my videos constitute as financial advice if you are however looking for financial advice please i beg you speak to somebody who is registered and qualified by the fsca to be able to give you financial advice but do remember the financial advisors all work in their own lane eh? so don't just go to any single financial advisor you must find the right one who has expertise in what you want financial advice in especially when we're talking about products right anyway so um this young lady says to me nicolette i had an account when i was still in university i was owing a hundred rand on that account and obviously over the years this thing has accumulated interest and on her credit report it's been reporting as non-payment skip payment non-payment skip payment non-payment skip payment and now she tried to apply for a car loan because she needs a car desperately and the banks are all rejecting her. Guys, don't wait until the banks reject you before you get acquainted with your credit report. We've been saying this for years. I'm going to say it again. Do not wait for a rejection or a decline letter on a credit application before you get acquainted with an actual credit report you have every right to access your credit report in fact most of the credit bureaus give you one free credit report annually but there are places like the likes of kudo the likes of clear score the likes of sunlam credit solutions where you can get this every single month I know even the banks now have incorporated it into their banking apps where you can see what your credit status is. In actual fact, just two days ago, I got a message on FNB or a text from FNB saying, um, outstanding amount on my overdue personal loan at FNB. And I was like, ah, what personal loan are you talking about? What is this? And I quickly went on to my credit report to check if there's no some level of identity theft on my id number and my name and the, luckily there wasn't but that is the access you've got and don't worry because people always say if you keep checking your credit report it's going to um, 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 um affect your credit score it's not if you are not checking for credit purposes so if you're simply checking for instance for your own knowledge so that you understand if you are checking for instance for um a job um, um, um specifications you don't have to worry about it because that's not a, a hard inquiry it's regarded as a soft inquiry so anyway this young lady wants to buy a car and she wants to understand what it is that she can do because she's now paid off the account she submitted the letters of goodwill to the credit bureau so then obviously the first question i ask is what is the timeline when did you do all of these things and she's like i did this on monday i'm like no sweetie it's too early it's too early remember guys it's important to remember that the credit bureau reporting is a system the system is a machine it's not human beings it's a machine that works from whatever data it receives from the different lenders whatever's inputted into that machine it is a system that then works its algorithm and will calculate what your credit score is so you've got to give it time and also it is very dangerous and i think salem nolubaba law nyati and i spoke a lot about this do not fix your credit score just so that you can take out credit it's not a good idea your credit score should always be worked on month to month so that on the day that you need it, it is there for you. So that was step number one that I explained to her. Step number two, I then said to her, well, look, at the end of the day, you need human intervention. 
So at the car dealerships, they've got what is called F&I people. These are the finance and insurance people. And what these guys do is they help you with the credit application to the different banks. Now, the advantage of going to a dealership and using an F&I is the fact that they've got relationships with the bank. So for instance, in a small e situation like this, which is actually a big situation because it impacts your credit score and you could get declined, the F&I can go have a conversation and submit those letters of goodwill to the actual credit facility or credit department where you are applying for that car loan. Now, the problem with this is that it puts you in a desperate situation. So, in other words, whatever the bank says, whatever offer the bank puts on the table, you almost have no negotiating power. So, ultimately, you end up probably taking a car loan with an interest rate that is not favorable to you, considering the fact that we may just have another interest hike looming, right? So it's very, very important to make sure that you don't find yourself in a situation where you are desperate to access credit and you are now negotiating from a, a weak stance, man. Like, it's a weak stance. I would say rather wait and wait it out and wait for the system to actually update them. And remember, I don't know, because different lenders will use a different mix of really assessing your credit. But another thing you must remember is that often with home loans, for instance, they will look at your credit score over the last 24 months. So your current credit score is not the only determining factor. Because remember, it's about behavior. And we've come to know that people do fix their credit scores just before they apply for an actual loan. So what these guys do is they will look further. But another third way to really overcome this is to have good affordability. So if you've got great affordability and the bank is like, actually, look, your credit status is a bit of a mess and we understand what happened. You forgot about the 100 rand or sometimes people don't forget about 100 rand. They keep an account open because they don't close it. So the, 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 the old retailers, the likes of Edcon used to have what is called a club book club or club club uh, membership. And they keep charging the club membership to the account and that builds up and actually creates an outstanding balance on your account. But you don't realize that you've got an outstanding balance because those books are even getting lost because when you open the account, you probably lived in varsity or you lived at another address. They're going to that address. You don't even know. And then the day you want to apply for a car loan, a home loan, a personal loan, a credit card, you're getting declined. So because of this, if it's a small and a matter like that, then at least your affordability sometimes covers for it. So the bank will then maybe come back and say, look, we see what's happening, but we may need a deposit of this amount of money just so that they can buffer themselves from any potential risk of you defaulting on that loan. So these things are very important. Taking care of your credit score is not a one-time thing. It's not a thing that you do only when you are looking for credit. It is an everyday thing because it can become a contingency plan. Why do I say this? I've mentioned this in another video where I say sometimes having access to good credit lines can become the emergency that you need if you don't have those emergency funds, but you need good credit. And good credit is not credit only that you use to buy assets or income generating assets. Sometimes good credit is in the form of a credit agreement where you have negotiated those terms and conditions, the interest rate that they're charging you, the loan um, 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 period, and of course you're getting the amount that you actually need. All of this is very, very important. I'm gonna leave this one here um, today and we'll circle back with another one on how to improve your credit scores because I see it's an ongoing reminder that I need to keep making. And you know what? I love doing it. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.